In this video, we will talk about the three broad categories of mobile applications. A mobile application, most commonly referred to as a mobile app, is a type of application software designed and developed to run on small, wireless computing devices such as smartphones or tablet computers. Mobile apps allow consumers to handpick what their devices are able to do. Mobile apps developers take into consideration the demands and constraints of the devices and also take advantage of their specialized capabilities. For example, a gaming app might take advantage of the phone's accelerometer. Another example is an app that uses a location-based feature. Apps are divided into three broad categories, namely native applications, web applications, and hybrid applications. The first mobile apps category that we will tackle is native application or native app. A native app is built in a specific programming language for a specific device platform, such as iOS or Android. Native apps are coded using a variety of programming languages. For example, native iOS apps are written in Swift or Objective-C, and native Android apps are written in Java. Some of its examples that can be downloaded from the App Store or Play Store are the messaging service WhatsApp, audio streaming and media services provider Spotify, AR mobile game Pokemon Go, and GPS navigation software Waze. Let's look at the significant advantages of native apps. Native apps are faster and more reliable in terms of performance because of their singular focus. It is built specifically for a mobile device's operating system. Native apps can connect with the device's hardware features like Bluetooth, phone book contacts, camera roll, near-field communication, and more. It uses push notifications to alert users. Push notifications are automated messages sent by an application to a user when the application is not open. Native apps have a more finely tuned user interface and they usually need to pass a much stricter development and quality assurance process before they are released. Here are its disadvantages. The code you create for one platform cannot be reused on another. Developing multiple versions of the app that will work on every platform drives up costs. The user has to download the new file and reinstall it. This takes up space in the device's storage. At this point, let's talk about the second mobile apps category called web apps. Web apps are accessed via a web browser on your mobile device. They are actually responsive websites that adapt their user interface to the device that the user is on. Web apps don't need to be downloaded as native apps do. They load in browsers like Chrome, Safari, or Firefox. They are developed using JavaScript, CSS, and HTML5. Some examples of web apps are the following. Google Workspace, which allows you to collaboratively create and automatically save documents. Trello, which enables team collaboration for more effective project management. And Microsoft Office that has a popular online suite of products with Word, Excel, and PowerPoint available as web apps. Let's examine the advantages of web apps. It is more economical to develop a web app compared to native app because there is no need to customize it to a platform or OS. A single version of a web app is able to support several operating systems. No need to download a web application. A user can directly interact with it on a web browser. Developers make sure that web apps get updated to the most recent version so everyone who accesses it has the same version. Users don't need to download and reinstall the update. Many developers find it easy to change the interface. As a result, business operations can be done precisely with fewer efforts. Web apps are designed to be supported by any operating system with a web browser. Let's take a look at its disadvantages. A large web app performs considerably slower than a native app. This is because web apps require a minimum device memory since they run through a browser. 
web apps may lack the feature of a quality control system, resulting in safety and security issues. Web app is not available in App Store and Play Store. Therefore, it is difficult to make an awareness among audiences. The user goes to a specific website to run a web app, and all information is saved on a server-based database. This means web apps are entirely dependent on the browser used on the device. If the website fails, the web app fails too. Web apps won't completely work offline. They require a stable internet connection to be used. We are now in the third category, and this is called hybrid apps. These apps combine elements of both native and web apps. Basically, they are web apps that look and feel like native apps. They might have a home screen app icon, responsive design, fast performance, even be able to function offline, but they are really web apps made to look native. Hybrid apps use a mixture of web technologies and native APIs, or application programming interfaces. Here are some examples of hybrid apps. Instagram, which started as a native app, but when acquired by Facebook, it was rewritten using the hybrid app coding language. The popular chat network for gamers, Discord, the social media giant, Twitter, and the new version of Gmail that uses both native and HTML elements. Let's view its advantages. One code share to manage. They use a single code base, hence there is much less code to maintain. Building a hybrid app is much quicker and more economical than a native app. Once you've built for one platform, you can launch on another. Just like in the native app, the device's features like Bluetooth, phone book contacts, camera roll, NFC, and more can be accessed. It loads rapidly and it gives a consistent user experience. For its disadvantages, hybrid apps might lack in power and speed. Getting the hybrid app to run on every platform takes considerable work. iOS and Android users can identify the differences between hybrid and native apps. These differences may frustrate those app users. We come to the end of this video lesson. I hope I have given some light to your knowledge about the three broad categories of mobile applications. If you find this helpful, please like, leave a comment, and consider subscribing to my channel. Thank you for your time.